long-time viewers of the channel will know that I am an OG not enjoyer of Drake. It's important to me to make it clear though that my lack of appreciation for Drake has never really been that much about Drake. It's mostly been about what Drake represents for hip hop and you know art in general. I'm not the guy that was like, oh, Drake is soft and Drake is light skinned and all those things. That criticism has been very shallow in, in my opinion one of the reasons why it's hard to make good critiques about drake because you end up being joined with dudes that clearly have no analytical basis for critiquing another dude other than calling him gay but that's not what we do here on the b-sides even if it's light work so i want to be clear drake is bad because his music is boring and unchallenging and for my sensibilities that's not what hip-hop is supposed to be that said drake's recent album for all the dogs has me feeling differently not necessarily appreciating the music a whole lot more although i'll get to that but thinking about drake's experience and his unique position in hip-hop culture differently than i have up until this point so drake came out with for all the dogs his 11 billion studio album drake just drops albums every year and makes it seem like they're a big deal like nfts at this point it just is what it is. For the record, this new record is probably one of my favorites of his in a while. To me, it's the most interesting thing that he's made since nothing was the same almost 10 years ago. Cause it's the first, I think, glimpse into the real Drake that we've had in that entire time. Go and watch my full video breaking down a lot of my issues with Drake for the entirety of this take. But the short version that's important for us to understand here is that Drake started out with a deep desire to be loved and accepted by hip hop culture and the industry industry as a whole and was regularly aggressively rejected by hip hop for a long time until he was basically undeniable. By the time he made nothing was the same, he was finally really starting to become a prominent figure in hip hop culture, but it's also the same time that he seemed to stop caring about a culture that didn't really fully embrace him. But against all odds from that moment on, he amassed the power and clout to dictate the entirety of what hip hop culture was to a significant degree. And with that power and clout, he basically set himself to make mostly disposable, often very catchy pop rap that he put minimal effort into as an artist. This is why, although again, there are a few great songs and a tons of great lines, Almost everything that Drake has put out over the last 10 years has been interchangeable with whatever else he's put out, except for when he randomly decides to colonize a whole genre. You could play songs off of Chocolate Lover Boy and Scorpion and parts of this last album, and an average person couldn't tell you which Drake album that came from. There has been no reason for Drake to stretch himself any further as an artist, and it's kind of obvious that he maybe couldn't, or at least there's no reason for him to actually want to. And for a while, I think this was fine, but in the past few years, it seems like the vibe around Drake has started to shift. Drake was never truly celebrated by the culture like the true icons of hip hop, but he was definitely beloved by the machine. And with the machine on his side, he was always in the mix. He made sure to stay relevant and have his finger on the pulse of all the trends. And combined with his genuine talent as a hit maker and his clout, he was still very much loved and revered as a whole, regardless of where that love really came from. He had a very ardent fan base among black women and of course his own army of stands. But now it seems like even those communities are shrinking. Black women began to write him off after his nice guy act started to lean into nice guy misogyny, starting maybe with his petty and semi-creepy behavior toward Rihanna, as well as numerous instances of questionable behavior toward other young women, which has now graduated into overt antagonism toward the likes of Meg Thee Stallion and Esperanza Spaulding. And many of his fans have gotten tired of his formulaic music, proclaiming several of his recent records to be mid at best. Now, heading into his late 30s, Drake's fans that were screaming YOLO with them 10, 15 years ago are maturing and moving on to different phases of their lives and different perspectives on the world around them. And it feels like they're having to leave Drake behind. And for me, ironically, this is actually the most interesting thing about Drake right now. Drake for a while tried to make himself out to be the good guy, to still see himself as that put upon and ostracized and bullied figure that no one loved and respected at the beginning of his career. But now that he's gotten so far into his career, he's still complaining about being hated and it just comes off 
pretty shitty. It doesn't help that he has some bars on this album that are straight out of like a 17 year old suburban edge Lord's rhyme book. There's still great lines and bars on this album, which Drake has always been capable of, but there's tons of cringe. For example, could tell I'm getting under your skin like an orange peel. Cause your words don't match your actions like a foreign film. Next month is going down like timber. Feel like I'm bi cause you're one of the guys, girl. And most significantly, you got my mind in a terrible place, whipped and chained you like American slaves. <sighs> that is, that's some good cringe. But the real cringe seems to be about the way that Drake sees himself in terms of the level of respect he's getting and his own love life. Without rehashing the whole record, if you look at songs like Calling For You, Bahamas Promises, Amen, etc., you have Drake doing his usual complaints about not being able to find love, but it's so unabashedly sleazy and unlikable pretty much the whole time that it becomes actually interesting to watch because it's like a train wreck and something you've never seen before. Imagine if one of the worst people you know made an album where they dead seriously set themselves to complain about the consequences of their own toxic behavior and bad decisions. We don't usually get stuff like that. People usually swear that their ex is the problem or narcissist. Everyone makes themselves out to be the victim of the bad things in their life, of the bad relationships they've been in. I've never heard a 36 year old man complain that their 25 year old girlfriend that they got by spending money on and taking them to nice trips is too shallow and materialistic and can't cook. Like you don't hear people say stuff like that with a straight face. And this is where I think I got my epiphany that Drake is what happens when the bitter, frustrated, bullied dork actually gets that glow up experience that all bullied, put upon dorks imagine in their quiet moments. Except in Drake's case, there's never been an opportunity to unpack or own the like lasting trauma and flaws and issues that came from that type of experience because Drake has been shielded from maturing by money and success and fame and clout and power. For those who weren't there or may not have been paying attention, before Drake was Champagne Poppy, he was Jimmy Brooks, a side character in Degrassi Junior High, a tween drama that mostly aired in Canada. And before, during, and after that, he was Aubrey Drake Graham, a talented, but incredibly uncharismatic, kind of gawky looking and clearly dorky, tried hard wannabe rapper from Canada, who in any other era of hip hop would never have been given the chance to make any waves, let alone become a prominent or even dominant artist in hip hop culture. Again, go watch the full video for the full breakdown. It's clear Drake is still Jimmy Brooks. He's still Aubrey. He's still a dork. He's a cornball. And I say that as a dude who is also still a dork and a cornball. Corn, recognize corn. And like those ostracized outsiders, Drake clearly desired not just acceptance in the culture that he had his eye on, but glory in the eyes who shunned him. Drake loved hip hop and was a fan of the pure, highly respected, street credible rappers in the game at the time when he was coming up. This is what makes his clap back to Joe Button, who was a mid 2000s hardcore lyricist that's now a podcaster so funny. Cause Drake jokes that Joe Button wasn't successful and quit hip hop because he couldn't make any money out of it, despite the fact that he was highly respected for his lyrical prowess. Drake said that Joe Button would do shows with only 450 dudes, all wearing baggy NYC jeans and some other funny roast. But clearly doesn't think about the fact that if Joe Button would have did a show back in those early 2000s, Drake would have been the type of dude to go there. Before becoming the biggest rapper in the world over the last decade, Drake was constantly disrespected, joked about, called soft, gay, spit on, and literally slapped by Puff Daddy one time in public. Drake wanted acceptance and respect in the hip hop world like Joe Button had and did not get it. But you gotta give him credit, he persevered and eventually made it to the top without the approval of the culture. Although there's a whole other set of problems with how that happened. Again, go watch the other video. And now at the top, after all he went through to get there, from what I can get from Drake's music and petty behavior, he doesn't seem to feel any different about himself. He doesn't seem to have learned anything through that experience. He hasn't grown at all musically and probably not personally. He comes off just as awkward and oblivious and insecure. And it doesn't help that his song and lyrics complaining about bad girlfriends and haters all the time just 
makes it sound even goofier. Drake rapping about being hated and put upon and bullied made sense in 2012 and 2011 when he was still hip hop's underdog. But now it just sounds like a dude that doesn't know what's going on around him. The irony is that even with the level of success that Drake has had and the money that he's made and the women that he's been with, I think he would trade positions with Joe Button in a heartbeat, if not just to get that respect that he still doesn't have, that was the main reason why he became a rapper in the first place. And I don't even like Joe Budden. I didn't like his music. I don't like his pot. Anyway, to me, this is what happens when you have that loser outcast experience and you only externalize it and never process or seek to grow from it in a more productive way. Like if you take the stereotypical incel fantasy, it's to glow up and do some looks maxing, get a job or strike it rich with some NFT, Bitcoin dropship stuff. And that will make you into the guy you imagine has always been incredibly successful with women and in life and has never been made to feel how you are often made to feel by the environment or community you're in. But that's not reality or at least it's not for most people aside from Drake. But it feels like Drake's goals for getting to the top were external. And now, although he's more wealthy and better dressed and better looking, it still seems like internally he feels like a loser or it's coming across in his music. And maybe he has more romantic options, but he's struggling to find fulfillment and value out of those partnerships and out of that success. He still smells of desperation. He still sounds exactly how he sounded in 2010. The lesson here is that without an actual process of working through trauma and pain, it keeps you in that headspace. I want to be clear, I'm not trying to insinuate that people who have been bullied and been victims of community ostracism deserve that treatment and that's what they need to unpack. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is that regardless of why you have experienced mistreatment, you can't just make that your defining core characteristic for how you keep moving through the world. You have to find more than that or that is all you're gonna be limited to no matter what else you do for the rest of your life. You'll never be able to enjoy any success or progress that you've built for yourself after that treatment ends. You'll end up like Drake, sending mean DMs to Anthony Fantano at 11 o'clock at night just to call him a loser for not liking your music. Yes, this is a real thing that Drake did. I genuinely feel bad for how Drake was treated when he entered the game. Again, you have to have been there, it was like, there's a kid that gets bullied at the popular lunch table, but that kid comes back to that lunch table every day to get the same treatment, except the lunch table is hip hop radio and the hip hop blogosphere of the late 2000s. That had to have had a scarring effect. And I know what that feels like to have people hate you online for ridiculous or stupid reasons. And I also know from experience that hyper focusing on that treatment and making all of your art or work about your persecution and responding to every little petty issue or disagreement that you might have with internet trolls, that's not the sign of a secure person with better things to do. And I genuinely hope there's a future where Drake figures this out, maybe does some self-reflection or therapy or something. Because Drake is no longer Jimmy Brooks or biracial Canadian Aubrey that gets roasted by the whole of hip hop culture for a decade and a half. He is the biggest figure in the game. Drake won. He won. But you wouldn't know it from his music or behavior, would you? And at a certain point, I hope there's a shift and he figures that out. I'm Feek the Signifier, and this has been Lightwork.